Okay, so here we are, ceramics. Um, this I'm gonna make. Today I'm gonna make a shark. Here's an example I made last year. Um, I'm gonna show you how to make the shark itself. This is made in two pieces, um, and then the base was made separately. Believe it or not, the base took longer to make than it did to make the shark. This is a hammerhead shark, and um, I used wires to support it. And this is what it's gonna look like after it's glaze fired. It'll sit just like this. So I made a little diorama. And this is hollow, okay? And so is the base. So again, you don't want super thick pieces of clay. So this is what we're gonna make, but instead of a hammerhead shark, I'm going to make a great white shark. So before you start an animal, it's really important you have references. Okay, that's really important. So you want different perspectives, a head view, a couple of side views, I even did a bottom view. This is gonna be good to get the proportion of where the fins go and the tail, okay? And you can see, kind of funny in this image, there's a scuba diver or a snorkeler and this shark is not interested. I think he already had his full uh, something. So here's my reference, so what I'm gonna do, and it won't be as big as this one, but the first thing I'm gonna do is take two pieces of clay. So I'm gonna move my reference off to the side. I'll just be looking at that. I might pull it back to show you how I'm comparing. So I'm gonna take this piece of clay and I'm just gonna twist. I cut a section off the top and then I cut that section into sections. I'm gonna take this. Now for the body of the shark, um, you can see it's tapered on this end and tapered on this end. I'm doing this in two pieces and it will be hollow. So I'm going to create essentially two carrot shapes. My advanced kids will know this. Uh, a lot of things derive from a carrot. So what I'm trying to do right now is to get rid of that seam. Okay, and with my pinky touching the table and my hand at an angle, I'm going to begin to make a taper. So there's one. And right now, I'm just trying to make a really fat carrot and make sure this is somewhat round, okay? So I'm gonna do the same to this. I put that off to the side. And you can see when I start to roll a coil, this starts to fold and kind of stick out. And I wanna bring that back in. You don't wanna create um, a folding, meaning you don't want that clay to just keep extending itself past. Okay, so I think this is going to be the back end of the shark. So this is going to be longer. All right, and I'm just going to drop this. And then I'm striving for it being round. Okay, this is going to be the front of the shark. So can you see this piece here is going to be the tail? And this is the narrow end. And then this is going to be the head, the fatter end. So what I need to do now is to make sure these are of similar diameter and they're as best as round as possible. So there we go. There's going to be, oops, there's going to be my shark right there. So I need to hollow these out. These are solid. So look at the technique I'm going to hollow out. I take my modeling stick and I'm going to use it as a gauge. So this is the back end of the shark. I want at least a thumb's width of clay there. So I'm going to just measure. So I measure using my hand and I'm gonna hold that stick firmly. So I'm gonna press this in, in the center and go to that point. And I'm just gonna hang on to the stick and gently roll this. And this is like an internal rolling pin and I'm widening this out and I'm making it thinner and it's open. So there's the one piece, okay. Now we'll do the same for this. This is the head of the shark. So I'm gonna do the same here. I want about a thumb's width. There's my mark, so I'm gonna press it in. And I'm gonna rotate this around and hollow this out. This will stretch a little bit. Try to get the wall thickness of similar um, thickness. Okay, we're pretty close. I need a little bit of clay here. Again, to keep your extra clay, a little Tupperware. I have more clay in here with the wet rag, all right? Let's see here. The only thing about using a cloth is after a while it starts to get a little stinky, but it works. 
Don't use paper towels. Paper towels will stick to your clay and they fall apart and you'll be really frustrated. So what I'm gonna do here, I have these two pieces. So first thing I'm gonna do is line up the shape and try to get what I think is going to be the best look of the shark with the belly, okay? So watch what I do. I'm going to put them together for a second. I'm going to use the chisel point and I'm going to scratch onto both pieces and that tells me where to put it together. I also use that line to score and again when I score I don't just do one line here. This is not scoring. You need to vigorously score the clay, okay? And I'm reaching for water I'm dipping my modeling stick in there, and this is enabling me to create a paste. You can see the water and the scoring is really scuffing it up, and it's going to bond really, really well. So, okay. So there, there's one piece. Now I'm going to do the same there. There's that mark. So it's directly in front of me, and I'm scoring away from me. Okay. reaching for the water so there we go I got it scored now I'm gonna line these two up and I'm just gonna twist and get it to lock okay and then now I'm gonna just gently roll this just a little bit not a lot right now I'm just trying to get it so these are these two edges are both uniform now I'm gonna take a small piece of clay not a lot and I'm gonna roll me a small coil okay move this out of the way so I'm gonna roll a small coil here and you probably want it, the best thing is to have it the thick, uh, thickness of this modeling stick. So a little bit slightly thinner than a pencil, okay? And again, coils, fingertip to palm. So that's fine. That's pretty close to similar thickness, yeah? So now I'm going to, while it's on the table, and again, you need to be working on a surface that clay won't stick, I'm just going to use my palm and I'm going to flatten this coil. Okay. I'll pick that up. Now I'm going to put this coil right where that seam is, okay? And this is just going to make sure that it doesn't come apart. So now I'm going to blend one side first. I like to use my fingertip and really grip the clay well. Again, notice my fingers are dry. I don't my fingers are wet, aren't wet. If they were wet, I would have trouble doing this very simple task of just trying to blend that flattened coil to one side or the other. Now do the other side. So this just ensures a really good bond and that little seam will vanish. And now that we have air trapped, um, the internal resistance from that trapped air will help hold the shape, okay? So now this is where um, I am gonna start to achieve, let me put this here. This is where I'm gonna start to achieve this shape. I really like the look of that fat whale, or um, shark there. And then you can see here the huge belly. So I'm gonna try and go for this look. Okay, so we use, look at the clay and look at the outside silhouette. Look how I manipulate the, the head. I'm gonna go like this, use the table, okay? Around it a little bit and then use the table to help you achieve the shape that you want. That edge. So it has a prominent nose. Look at it here with that lower jaw and that prominent nose and point. I need to flatten the top. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So before you do any detail, this is what we're trying to do right here. Okay. I'm trying to get that look. And I think I'm pretty close. Now the sloping angle of this, I need to bring this down a little bit. So don't be afraid to use the table to achieve what you want. Now the lower jaw I'm going to create once uh, I get to that point. But I have the body set. So now I'm going to make, wow, this is almost the same size as uh, the hammerhead shark. So now I'm going to make uh, the extremities. So I'm going to need two pieces of clay the same size for the fins, and the best way to judge volume, put it into a ball, okay? 
If it's a little large, meaning the fins that we make, if they're big, we can always cut the back end. So that's similar amounts of clay. And then I'm going to need one for the top, the dorsal fin. That isn't too big. Okay, and then I'm going to need the tail. Okay, and the tail is large, but not super big. It's bigger than the dorsal fin. So I'm going to make that. Watch this technique. I'll tell you what, let me make these little guys. So here's the two pectoral fins. Those are on the side. Again, carrot shape. Pinky touching the table. Okay, like that would be good. There's one. Okay. And then we can always compare what we do to make sure they're similar. I'm going to flatten this out. Flatten this one out. Then we want to compare and see if they're close. What do I need to adjust? This one is a little bit... There, I think they're the same width now. Very close. Look what I'm going to do now. For these fins, I'm going to do this right now. All I'm doing is tapering that edge. See how wide that is? It, um, on the real shark, you know, it's like a wing. It helps the shark propel through the water. So we want that kind of tapered edge, nice crisp edge. Do the same to this one. Okay. And then this side. And then a point. And we just check. Yeah, now these are quite big, so look at I get them both lined up, and then I can do this to make sure they're the same. I cut through both of them, and I took off that extra clay, and now we have two shark fins. Okay, I'll make the dorsal fin. That's the one on the top. Again, a taper. This is short and stocky, so I'm going to flatten this out. And it has a slight curve. A subtle curve in the back and the front. So let me just gonna manipulate this. To taper that edge. Yeah. And again, I'm gonna remove some of this material on the bottom. So there's the two pectoral fins, dorsal fin, now we need the tail fin. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna take this piece of clay, and I got a lot of material here, so let's see how we're gonna do this. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna do what's called a double carrot. So pinky touching the table, I'm gonna to roll the coil in this direction, and I'm gonna do the same on this end. And let's see, volume wise, that's awfully big. I'm gonna take some off and try it again. Getting your proportions right is important, and um, you know you always have the opportunity to change your piece until you let it dry. Once you let it dry, essentially you're saying you're done with it. So I think this is going to be pretty good volumetric-wise for the shark. So I double carroted this. Now watch this technique. That's awfully fat. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some of this material. Well, I'll flatten it first. I'm going to flatten this and flatten that. Then I'm going to take some of this material. I'm just going to pinch. And this is how we're going to, what I'm doing is I'm making this little tab. And this is how we're going to attach this shark fin to the shark. And this little tab here. Now I have a lot of material. Um, there's ways to get rid of that. I can use a flexible metal rib. Um, I can just shave off. I'll show you a couple of techniques. This one here, just shave off some material. Be careful, this tool is sharp. But I can thin that out this way. Okay. You can also cut it or scrape it. And let's see, I'm going to scrape some on this side. And if you were having trouble with the shape of your tail, you could also just use this as like a knife and cut some material. Okay. So, and then now I can go ahead and taper this edge. See how fat it is? I'm just going to thin that out. And again, I'm using my references. While I'm working, I'm always looking at my references 
to make sure that I am keeping the form and the shape similar, okay? That's what my reference is. So I'm tapering that fat edge. And again, until you let the clay dry out and call it quits on it, you can always keep manipulating and changing the shape, making your piece look better, okay? For right now, that's a start. So I got all my pieces, shark body, shark tail, pectoral fins, dorsal fin. Let me get all this out of the way, okay? You don't wanna leave this scrap clay just laying on the table. Go ahead and put it in your container and keep moist, okay? And I'm gonna need a sponge. Bear with me one second here. I'm gonna get me a sponge. It's good to have a couple of sponges to support your work. These you can get at the Home Depot. Uh, they're usually in the paint or the tile area. This is what they use to clean off after you apply grout to tiles. So here's my shark. And I've already determined that this is the top. So look at what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make the mouth and I'm gonna come in here. I'm using this flexible metal rib and I'm just gonna get a shape of a mouth. And I'm gonna pull down and really try to get the proportions right. Okay. There we go. And I'm gonna pull this back. So there's what I'm striving for, okay? So again, keep checking your references. All right, clean that up. Now, I don't wanna flatten the belly on the table, leaving the shark, so I'm gonna leave it right there. And I'm gonna work on the uh, teeth and the eyes right now, okay? And the eyes are right about here, eyes are right there. So I like to just insinuate them first and you want to get head on to make sure they're centered. Oh, that is not, let me do that one right there. So let's look head on, that's looking a little bit better. I had it almost a little bit off. So look at this technique for making eyes. I'm gonna get this modeling stick and I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna take, with the chisel point flat, parallel with the surface, I'm gonna just rock this and make like an upside down C shape. Then I'm gonna come here like this with the chisel point at a high angle and I'm gonna just push that clay up to make an eyelid. Can you see that eyelid? Now I'm gonna take this pencil point and I'm barely gonna come in here and just barely press in that corner and I'm going to come here and barely press in this corner to give the illusion of that eye. Okay, I'll put a little dot, like a pupil there, okay? Let's do the other side. So you see how far off I was on my first placement of where I thought the eye was. And then when I looked head on, um, I saw how far off I was and I made that change. So again, I'm going to do the same thing. Okay, chisel point, upside down C. I'm gonna come here like this and at the other angle, I'm just gonna lift up. There we go. So we got kind of an eyelid happening right in here. You see that? And you can come back. This is getting a little dirty. I'm gonna re-emphasize that eyelid a little bit. Okay, now I can come here again with my pencil point and in this corner, just gently press Give the illusion just in that corner that the eye is round. Okay, and I'll put a little dot there too. So there I got my eyes. Now for the teeth. Okay, the eyes are centered. And 
And now for the teeth, this is uh, pretty simple, you know. I mean, we could actually make teeth, but we could do something like this, where we just take the chisel point of the modeling stick, and we come here and we just make little triangles. The edges. And we'll go all the way around and do that. Changing my hand position here. So sharks have rows of teeth that we could do another row if you wanted to. But for now, I want to just show the shape. I'll have some more work to do on this and I will probably after I stop the video. So what I want to do now is do the placement. Again, this is a hollow piece with air trapped um, I'm going to use this reference point right here, this image, to show where I am on the body I'm going to put this. So I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to just try to guess about the best placement. I'm going to put a mark here and then directly on the opposite side. And there is going to be where I'm going to attach the fins. And just before the fins, just before these fins are the gills right there, okay? So, and there is one, two, three, there's four gills on a shark. So I'll put the gills on first before I add the um, pectoral fins. All right, references again, I'm using them. So there's there, I'm gonna use this to make the gills themselves. So. They're actually this way. As they swim, water passes through. So I'm coming on this angle. You know, any uh, car buffs um, on the old uh, Mustang the very first Mustangs, they put gills like a shark in the front. You could see little lines like that. They don't do anything, they're just decoration, but the designers wanted to put that on the car. Okay, so I'm checking to make sure that I'm gonna be symmetrical on this. Again, I'm working fast, you know, let you just find your pace. It, you don't need to be as fast as me. Um, the thing is to get the quality of your work going, okay? So I'm just gonna put this together now to show you. So I'm gonna do the tail first, okay? So if this was a fish, okay, like a shark is, the tail is vertical. If it was a mammal, it would be horizontal like a dolphin. So what I'm going to do here, this is my tab. I'm going to come here like this, and I left a good thumb's width at the very end. So I'm going to come like this, and I'm going to cut the material. And then I'm going to pry it back and open that up. See, I didn't go into the body, so I still have trapped air, and it's still helping hold the shark shape without it collapsing. So now I'm going to score each of these tabs. And I'm just going in the same direction. Okay. Let's see what I'm doing. And now I'm going to score this. And that's exactly how I made the hammerhead shark. All the same techniques. So. But it's always good to have references. Um, always check. I look for the outside of the shape first to get the basic form. And then I build from there. So I'm going to put just a little bit more water. And then we'll put this right like that. And then I'm gonna close this off and pinch it together. And this clay is really soft. So I would at some point start to blow dry this and have this tail hold, or you can leave it out at um, ambient air room temperature and let it um, firm up. So for a few hours. Also, there's these little glides 
at the end of a shark's tail. Most sharks have these. The end, they're these little flat portions. They're not quite fins, but it streamlines the water. I think it helps with the propulsion of the shark with the tail. And again, this is really soft, but I'm just gonna leave that there. And I'm gonna elevate this up to another one. And then now I'm gonna add the pectoral fins here. So we got two of them. And this is gonna be, I'm gonna put them like right here as one. And they're just behind uh, the gills. So I like to get a head on view to make sure I'm there. There. So let's get a head on view and hopefully these don't fall. Okay, so that's what I'm looking for. So now I want to know where to scratch to attach. They look centered. I'm just going to scribe a line on the outside. And then I'll take one off at a time and scratch to attach. I can hold this. Now I'm going to attach them now, but I'm probably going to make a little tiny micro coil um, to, uh, I'll put that little tiny coil there to make sure these are bonded really well, but you can move it upside down, or I mean up and down to uh, make sure it's bonded well. So I might be out of frame here. I'm trying to uh, show you everything I'm doing. If there's some part you miss, you know, great thing about a video, you can replay if I, you think I'm going too fast. There. So there is my shark. And you can make whales, I mean fish, you can make cartoons. I've had students watch this demo and then make um, the cartoon shark from Finding Nemo, um, you know where you can go for a more real life study. Okay, lastly is the dorsal fin, that's on top. So it is well behind, and I also have these little fins to put on, but I'm gonna wait till it firms up. So the dorsal fin is well behind the um, pectoral fins. So I'm just gonna place it and then begin to see. And that looks about right. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go like this. I'm going to scribe. It's centered. Now, we have air trapped, and this is really important, okay? We have trapped air. I'm going to leave the air in there for a while, okay? Because this is soft. If I was to poke a hole right now, the shark would probably, the belly would start to collapse because I'm, I have a hole and now the weight of all this clay can let the air escape and let uh, the body collapse. So I'm gonna wait a little bit. Let me take this off the wires. You can see I made holes for this hanging, but if you wanted it just to sit on the table, you could just make a little hole where, you know, the back end of the shark would be where it would go to the bathroom. You could make an air hole there. I still have to put these little um, guide flippers and I'll, or fins and I will do that later, but similar size this clay shrinks about 13 percent so this might be the same size but you can see how i took a basic body and i did the same technique for this head as i did for the tail and i shaped it and sculpted the eyes so uh try making um a shark if you'd like that's it for this demonstration